Hello and welcome to Settings, the holiest place of all of real-time strategy. Uh, player from this game sent me this game. Uh, thank you very much. I already actually watched it, uh, and this is definitely replay worthy. And I think it sent to me a few weeks ago, so apologies for not getting to it. Uh, let's see. In this one, actually, some unfamiliar names, except the M and B. Some players uh, like to promote the idea that this is them, but I watched a couple of games of them. It does seem like uh, somebody trying to look like them, like for example here playing with Aeon in the middle. But at the same time you see some uh, craziness like a Tinoch build instead of a regular Dim build, which makes it a little uh, suspicious. And another thing of course, him being a bit of a dick to everybody uh, in English, which is another uh, thing that's weird since Dim is Russian. So unless Dim spent last year learning English, um, which is a possibility, but I'd like a little more convincing. Also, he needs to play a little better. Definitely not as good as them. Uh, let's see what else happens. He is taking on a player I've never seen before, Stormtrout, uh, playing as Seraphim. Moving in with some Selenes and looks like some Artie, so that's really good. Looks like uh, Zeomic. 15 people. This is 15 people. Uh, going uh, second air. It's going to be taken on Inferno Koi. On the other end, we got Black Phoenix taking on uh, Gravel. So, all f unfamiliar faces. Let's see how it turns out. Stormtrap looks like a little quicker to the middle. Looks like he was all out running. Getting some really nice chunks of mass. But one thing to note since the uh, pilot changed the reclamation in the water, that anything that touches water is about half the reclaim now. These large chunks of ships usually used to be 2,000, now they're only 1,000. They're still the biggest, but these other uh, reclaim is much more important now. Something to keep in mind. Looks like an early transport from Black Phoenix. Gonna get the Hydro. So I guess uh, while this is picking up, uh, I'd like to uh, point out some things. I was on the planetary annihilation um, message boards, in case people haven't heard that, that's supposed to be the new Atone Annihilation uh, spiritual successor, Subcom 3 or something. Um, I think when whenever you hear Neutrino or Maver speak, it's uh, it's really good, because he has a really good understanding of this game, Atone Annihilation and that, and hopefully he, really hope he he's the one who makes all the decisions, because some people on those boards, there was so much confusion there, uh, especially on the economy. Meanwhile, Stormtrout, taking on the Auroras. This is a lot like them, but need a little more convincing. Meanwhile, oh, a successful bomb here from Grouse. So while I'm talking about plant annihilation, we got bombing here on this island. So interceptors coming in. So there will be a fight over this island between Black Phoenix and Gravel. It looks like uh, Z the 15 people player. Holy damn. That's a lot of untire. That's a bit of an overkill. Meanwhile, uh, Stormtrout has been killed by M&B under six minutes. One thing we could check though is reclamation. Uh, nearly 6,000 for M&B while uh, Stormtrout got 5,500. So you can see the total now, it used to be 16,000. That's a little over 12,000 reclaim. Still very important to run there, but it might be a slightly different dynamic. Looks like successful drop now from Black Phoenix on the island. But one thing that uh, changed from uh, Tone Annihilation to Supreme Commander Economy they're both streaming economies, so you create a certain amount of uh, resource. For example, M and B here, creating about plus 50. His commander is under attack because he's aggressive. That's really good. Uh, and then you uh, use this mass. You can see he's at negative 40. Your factories use it. But a really big, interesting thing that is different from Tonalation to Supreme Commander. Tonalation, you also had engineers. And then engineers had different uh, capacity to build. But that capacity to build was uh, really determined by how many engineers you put on the project. So uh, an engineer uh, that say was a well, air engineers were different from construction engineers or KBOT engineers. But if you had a uh, hundred uh, uh, flying engineers, those planes were awesome. I mean, UEF still has something like that in this game. I probably should slow this down. Um, looks like. M and B going on attack. You have a hundred of them. They can be working on this project or assisting the factory. They're going to be using up the exact same amount of mass. What uh, has happened in uh, Supreme Commander Forge Alliance is that 
the amount of mass that, oh wow, that's a deck 3 mass extractor, is that you're going to be getting, is you're going to be using with an engineer. Also depends on the project. And people think this is a complication and uh, should be uh, removed. That is one of the greatest things uh, that has happened to economy uh, because it really made uh, build capacity another resource. Besides, I mean, it just made it more complicated, but it made it better. For example, a really clear example is the resource allocation. If you were to put 10 engineers on building resource allocation, you're going to absolutely stall. But the point is, don't put 10 engineers on resource allocation. You can use those engineers els elsewhere. It's actually a good thing that uh, the project allows you to use bu less build capacity to use up more resources. So it's uh, it's an completely another parameter that you should never take away. I really hope planetary annihilation doesn't make that mistake and makes different projects have different internal build capacity. So it's a so it's a combination of an engineer build capacity plus uh, build capacity that's assigned to a project that determines uh, the actual resource uh, usage. Probably kind of bungled up uh, up a bit, but uh, that's the point. If you play this game, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It looks like Tech 2 Navy from Inferno, a bunch of Auroras from M and B. No Navy whatsoever from 15 people. And it looks like Black Phoenix was a able to eventually regain his island. So, wow, that, these players really love their Tech 1 onto air. And it looks like the Navy from Black Phoenix is just beginning while a pretty massive Navy from Gravel, although he's made two Tech 1 naval factories that he's not using. But cruisers, that's always a good idea. Submarine Tech 2 bombers, always always good to see cyber units. Meanwhile, M&B has made pretty big progress into the middle. Black Phoenix has put his ACU in the middle. He's going to play some defense, tech to point defense. That's a really good thing to do. And these Auroras from M&B just made it all the way through Inferno's back base. But uh, tech one point defense is going to clean up. Remember, I had a discussion with uh, uh, Funkoff. Too bad I don't see Funkoff anymore. He was a really huge part of this project. I think early on, he was really... Well, uh, probably up to pilot decide uh, just how important he was, but in my view, he seemed to be always on, or always helping, always had really clear ideas. But this is where uh, I disagree with him. He said the uh, Auroras were not countered by tech on point defenses. I didn't really understand what he meant. He must have meant something deep that I can't understand. But we just saw clearly there that point defense just uh, annihilated eight Auroras whole bunch of uh, bombers here. And these are the Janus bombers. I love these bombers, but they're really not good against Navy. They're really good against stationary targets. Things like, oh, this is not where you want to fly. These cruisers are about to get some kills. See these bombers coming in? going to be shot out of the air. And what are they targeting? Yeah, so it looks like a bit of overkill. He tried to go for the factory. Those Janus bombers are really, uh, they're napalm strikes. And uh, what I like to do when going on a bombing run like that, give them a single, um, a single target like this factory. And as they're coming in, you just select one bomber at a time, click here, another bomber, click here, another bomber, click here. As long as you don't do it right when they're at the target, you can really, uh, first they have the primary target, and then you split them into the secondary uh, objectives as they get close about this far away. You can also have be leading with some uh, scouts that can spot the targets for you. So they all have approximately the same projector, then they sort of spread out. That way you could have wiped out this entire engineer with just three or four of those bombers. So a bit unfortunate there, those are very expensive. But quite beautiful against engineers. Looks like uh, Gravel is going to prevent Black Phoenix from getting into the ocean. He's got a cruiser, very good position. It's a great position for a cruiser especially with the uh, stealth which he does destroy it to the middle from gravel and there is a cyber navy coming in from Infirmus so it looks like both beaches are absolutely dominating the naval play also we got the air fight but looks like uh, Autrix has the numbers see multiple tech 3 power generators that's good only a single resource allocation that's a bit uh, disappointing from an Aeon player. Yeah, it looks like he is doing the correct trick. Assistant engineers that are guarding the factory. 
Meanwhile, uh, Autrix a bit behind. Still working on Tech 2 Power. You want to switch it up to Resource Allocation and Tech, tech 3 Power if you want to make SF. Otherwise, I um, imagine Autrix. Well, he just doesn't have the mass to power stall, but if he did, he'd power stall pretty hard. Still, he won air, which is nice. So it's more eco versus more air, but eventually, more eco will win. It looks like another group of SF coming in from um, DJ Damsey. And this is cool, this uh, gravel destroyer. It can actually at range point defenses. Really, the way to counter this is just some artillery. These move really slowly. If you remember uh, Supreme Commander 2, if you ever played that, this was one of the most important units, the Cyber Navy, in that game. Quite ridiculous. But this was the inspiration, and uh, the inspiration is much better than the result. Tech 3 air from uh, 15 people. Also, a whole bunch of arty. See how effective that is. Not very effective against Cybern that have a uh, stealth to mermaids. If you can't see it, you're not going to shoot it. So if you want to see it, you got to send some scouts. And actually, these arties, that's a big investment. They could do quite a bit of damage against that navy if they saw it. Tech 2 bombers coming in. And a GC from M&B here, minute 20. M&B really way, way better than anybody in this game. It's a bit unfair. Experimental moving through the middle. That's going to wipe everything out. Tech the bomber, start getting Black Phoenix. Black Phoenix got to run, otherwise he's going to die. And this is uh, going to become a pretty uh, one-sided game. Strat bombers coming in. Total their air domination from DJ Damsey. Yeah, and there's some flag here as well. Tech to flag. Strat bombers against GC. Black Phoenix is on the run. He's got to run. He's going to run for the water. See Black Phoenix trying to use the torpedo bombers to negate Gravel's navy. Shields from uh, M and B. So so far, really big problems for the top side with the GC running through. But we do see uh, DJ has just one air, and he's bombing this GC with some strat bombers. Meanwhile, Black Phoenix is on the run. Let's see if he survives. Inferno here, pretty good eco, and he's actually making battleships. Maybe a spider would be a better idea in this case. And you can see this is unfortunate, so much mass invested. But uh, the units can't shoot if they can't see. And he's trying to get Omni, but it looks like power problems. Omni, of course, would solve his issue. Yeah, you can see he can see all those units, but his artillery is for the most part dead or dying. It's a bit of some timing issues there. Have health on the GC moving through the middle. Supported by some cruisers, flak, more strat bombers, and looks like the GC. Which way is it going? Down the middle. Looking at uh, DJ though, he's got a massive economy. He's trying to get a GC of his own. Uh, Trix is trying to help out with his ASF, uh, but they're all running in. Uh, it's a huge crew out of ASF from DJ. So land versus air domination. Inferno. Pretty brave here, making a whole bunch of tech to point defense. He's about to lose some uh, tech three. See if he actually dies or not. He's still running, and that's pretty ridiculous. I think if M and B uh, went directly after the ACU, it would have been game over for Inferno. But he escapes, and also good play from uh, DJ Dam. Meanwhile, Inferno absolutely devastating uh, 15 people here. 15 people just got to run and rebuild. He had the right units, he just uh, didn't use them right. That was some nice torpedo bombing from uh, M&B. Of course, when you're facing this many cruisers, it's really difficult. See, M&B is going to show how to use uh, his artillery uh, installations correctly. And artillery is actually quite good. You can see they're having success. And the, really the big thing is that he is bombing uh, with torpedo bombers so he spotted these cruisers strat bombers coming in from a uh, DJ and uh, there goes uh, 15 people this is now 3v3 amazing survival from both Black Phoenix who ran away and Inferno who really cheated death Black Phoenix was getting wiped off the map though by uh, 
gravels navy but there is a GC coming in from DJ's and running moving up the middle while uh, anti nuke and M and B making another GC M and B uh, really has a great economy and looks like now torpedo bombers plus artillery is finally taking care of uh, Inferno's navy Inferno does have some battleships and those cannot range tech to artillery that M and B is using and of course with air cover those battleships are not going to be afraid of any torp bombers the Autrex is slowly getting his eco going he's got a whole bunch of tech 3 engineers running around which is a bit surprising he really just needs a lot more tech 1 engineers on this factory and a battleship from gravel let's we'll see how that works out that might need a little more air cover he does have a significant amount of cruisers and let's see what uh, DJ can do about those we're about minute 27 and here we see destroyers versus torpedo bombers from M&B but finally DJ is going to come in and clean that up and now with air cover this navy is going to move in we see Inferno making all the correct choices with the navy it's nice to see not switching to cruisers one thing will be nice is uh, this sonar here Tech 3 sonar to follow the navy it's really nice to stick a Tech 3 sonar here uh, then you can see what's going on in all the ponds <coughs> GC from DJ is made it to the middle, so you gotta repopulate the middle here. Multiple GCs from DJ. The GC from M and B is finished. Anti nuke from M and B is almost finished as well with the missile, and uh, looks like M and B switching to a restorer spam. So that's an interesting situation. How the heck? What Black Phoenix is on the island? This really surprised me here. Uh, he's got a no, it's just a Tech 2 ACU, but he's getting uh, artillery. And once again, we're seeing these units are capable of defending, but they're just not seeing the units. This is where stealth from Cybern really uh, makes things difficult. But stealth is countered by air. You just gotta send a bunch of these Tech 1 interceptors in here, and these destroyers would die. Otherwise, yeah, it's a bit frustrating to see that. But it is definitely happening. We see GCs now going up against each other in the middle, DJ. M, M and B, we do see support from uh, Inferno's battleships. It'd be nice to see if they target uh, M and B's GC, also artillery from M and B, doing quite a bit of damage. So it looks like this will be a victory for M and B, but this GC is quite a bit damaged. Another GC coming in and a donut. I did not see DJ just huge eco. Uh, one thing I haven't noticed: a whole bunch of Tech Three uh, gunships as well. Now this donut is a. Uh, that's a very powerful weapon. It's going to be very difficult for MNB to do anything about it. He does have some Tech 3 anti air, multiple shields. But the donut uh, doesn't really care. Those are pretty great graphics there. I think those have been upgraded in some mods in this video on YouTube. The donut has killed MNB. I'm not sure if the donut will survive. Yeah, 24 kills, uh, a little low on health. Still some Tech 3 anti air shooting it. GC moving in as well. A bunch of Tech 3 air now from Gravel moving in. Should be able to shoot that out of the air, and there goes the donut. But it has now become a 2v3. Gunships from Inferno now taking care of the Navy from Gravel. And of course, gunships always a good idea for the top side. They have DJ who's got absolute domination of air. And another donut from DJ now, here in minute 31. GC from DJ, of course, still alive. He's going to get a lot of veterancy from all these engines. That's a nice chunk of mass for whoever claims the middle. And so far, it looks like it's going to be Inferno's Navy is going to dominate completely. Of course, now Gravel does have the benefit of MNB's uh, really huge economy, at least for now. He has made a spider, making more spiders, more battleships. In an air fight that actually seems to be pretty close, but DJ is going to win it. Multiple battleships as well. Of course, Black Phoenix here surviving on the island. Perhaps he finally spotted that navy. These artilleries are going to work, but of course, these battleships from Gravel can go ahead and outrange, although they are getting hit by some artillery. And now, uh, with the gunships moving in, it'll be a pretty close fight. Meanwhile, Black Phoenix is retreating and also nuclear submarines moving out for gravel spider uh, probably should go ahead and attack this GC and kill it before it 
kills all these Tech 3 mask extractors. Yet another fight, this time it's against uh, Autrix, and DC continues to dominate in there, although many cruisers coming in. And you can see the battleships, they have dominated all this Tech 2 artillery. Black Phoenix has now been put into the corner. And a spider is now going to sneak in on their DC. See who wins this one. Actually, going to be pretty close, but Spider puts an end to that. Although Spider's got to dodge some of those battleships. So both teams doing significant amount of damage to each other. Although the economy uh, from DJ keeps on producing huge experimentals. This is the second donor. We've already seen a whole bunch of GCs from. And of course, gunships a really good counter to the Navy. Although here, Black Phoenix is trying to survive. And uh, probably will. You see these restorers. DJ is going to save his allies. going to take the cruisers out first, then the battleships. Love to see this uh, nuclear sub not die for no reason. Let's see uh, how the bottom side deals with this donut, however. See, this is how this map looks like from far away. It's a huge unit. That's one thing that's great about this game. The difference in size of some of the units is just uh, ridiculous. And this is you could probably start a fight on top of this donut. And it, actually, if uh, that's kind of the concept in Forge Alliance or Lantern Annihilation, you have flying objects that you can control that you have fights on, like asteroids. And actually, amazingly, that donut gets shot. So maybe a little bit of a mistake from DJ. Probably should have cleared the air first, then sent the donut in. Meanwhile, his restores killing battleships. Uh, probably just in time, Black Phoenix is in a bit of trouble getting some upgrades. Now, multiple experimentals from Gravel. And once it gets into late stages, you do see newer players. You, newer players usually r struggle early on because they can't compete in the eco race. Um, but then later on, everybody knows how to build. Uh, you take an engineer, you pick a fancy unit, and you make it, and then uh, it is pretty scary. And that's exactly what's happening in this game. There, these players begin to look better and better. And now a whole bunch of restores from DJ coming in. Early, unfortunate. That's the. Tragedy of Cybern, no shields for their navy, and uh, they get absolutely demolished. Of course, we've seen the stealth from Cybern give them huge advantage for both sides. All those tech to artillery, absolutely ineffective. Gravel really getting pushed out of the water. Although he does have some experimentals in the middle, probably should use them. And this is a fight you should not see. Uh, ASF versus, uh, yeah, that was really good anti air there from uh, Gravel more restores and uh, almost halfway on the nuke for Gravel's nuclear sub. Gravel also in the water here. Appears he is getting a teleporter. That's a huge. He's taking... So this takes 50,000, 45,000. Uh, so that's another thing with that discussion on plant annihilation forums. Just a ridiculous discussion. I don't know what to say. Uh, so this teleporter extremely expensive which you can get it very fast. Uh, if you... Um, have the resources for it. You don't need extra build capacity. The ACU's build capacity will get it for you at the cost of 500 mass and uh, 50,000 power. And it looks like gravel getting it pretty quick. So a teleporter for gravel should make things interesting. He's got uh, multiple different targets. Of course, the best one would probably be uh, DJ, D DJ Dam, who has no teleport protection, no point defenses next to his ACU. So he just needs to be spotted. Don't want to teleport here. This is really well defended. Tech to point defense is another third donut from DJ now. Here, uh, you might actually get away here. Although, a uh, shield for Black Phoenix on the ACU, but not too many things that actually fire back. So, either green or blue are uh, legitimate targets for gravel. The donut, third donut, is now going to play some defense against these experimentals. And uh, we do see two spiders for Inferno might be able to finish the third. Of course with this donut uh, helping out you should be able to survive. The middle is basically no man's land. And gravel uh, he's basically ready to do damage here coming up minute 40. 
experimentals making their way out of the water. They don't live for too long. Donut playing great defense. Where is the ACU for? Uh, Autrix. Don't really see him somewhere. Here he is. Under a shield, no teleport protection either. GC uh, really taking a good approach. He's going to do some damage, but won't live for too long. The spider is in the water. Really good defense. We see Inferno playing a little more safe, retreating. Both experimentals are going to die. Let's see Tech 3 scouts from uh, Gravel. He just needs to get some targets. I mean, he is he's in position to start killing people. Uh, the donut has finished its defense. It is now going to go on attack, and that's going to be very scary. Uh, unless you're in the water, you're most likely going to die if you're on the bottom side. So it's whoever is really going to get to kill the other person first. Of course, it's three ACUs versus two here. Let's see the donut Slow, slowly making uh, its way across. And really in this position you do see a pretty big advantage for the right side team. Middle and the rock completely wiped out by the left side. And here in this position it's really uh, odd tricks. Does not have much hope with the donut coming in this direction. Although we do see a whole bunch of strat bombers from odd tricks. And a whole bunch of scouts from uh, gravel. Now these strat bombers looks like they're going to target... Uh, Black Phoenix, he's got multiple Tech 3 and Terrace, it's going to take a lot of Strat Bombers to kill him. Now the Donut is moving in with a whole bunch of Restore, so this is a for force to end the game. Strat Bombers moving in. See a lot of Tech 3 anti-air, but most likely not enough. Strat Bombers not coming in. Black Phoenix getting hit. Lost a lot of a shield on that pass. We got a nuke from uh, Gravel. Probably against Inferno. Inferno is going to try to run, but he's going to bump into a bunch of engineers. Donut is uh, going to now go ahead and kill Autrix. Autrix bombers are going to continue bombing. Meanwhile, Gravel has just teleported to kill DJ. Autrix bombers kill. Black Phoenix gravel kills DJ. The nuke almost kills Inferno. So it looks like Inferno and Gravel, 2 7 player, is still alive. He has survived. Meanwhile, Gravel is in the process of teleporting again. We just saw a whole bunch of players die there. Autrix, Black Phoenix, and uh, DJ all died. And the teleport from Gravel, two Cybers meet each other. Gravel just needs to shoot uh, Inferno. And looks like Gravel is going to pull off a last kill. Everybody on the right side team has just died. Gravel is the last player alive. Although, looks like he died as well. There was just a little too much stuff there from uh, Inferno. So that ending there in that game I think was quite spectacular. It is a draw. Everybody is dead. And... Uh, Really, uh, thank you for sending me this replay. Hopefully people enjoyed it.